What's going on, Tar Hill Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Hill. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the number 14 North Carolina Tar Hills, 91 to 69 open and tourney victory over the Northern Iowa Panthers as UNC moves to 4 0 on this very young season. You say, Russ, I thought you had to work. I did go to work. And then I found out that where I was working, it's holiday hour, so they closed early. And that's why your boy was able to come back home and make this video. Now, let me start off by saying this. Hats off to Coach Jacobson and you and I. They were physical, they were scrappy, and they put the heels in a place where they had to band together and persevere. And coming back the way they did can only bode well for the rest of the season. It's good for them young kids to be tested. It's a great opportunity away from home. They're not playing well in the first half. They're down by six. And what do they do? They come out white hot, bro, smoking hot. And they end up retaking that lead and doing big things in the second half. So let's break this thing down. And it really is going to be a tale of two halves. North Carolina scored the first two points of the game as Harrison Ingram used his size to back down his defender. He clanks one off the rim, and that allows Mondo to come weak side and get the putback. And then it was like almost the heels seemingly went away from the post, and they settled for far too many jumpers, especially considering that early on they were not able to hit them. Armando Baycott finished with only three shots in the first half. Three, Armando Baycott, the preseason All-AC slash All-American forward, finished with three shot attempts. That is absolutely unacceptable. I will say this until I am Carolina blue in the face. Armando Baycott needs to touch the ball on every possession. Is he the greatest passer out of a double team? No, he isn't. But as they're bringing that weak side help, that defender down on the baseline to take that away, hey, it's up to Armando to, to recognize that and then make that extra pass. Make that pass out to the relocating shooter who can spot up and knock them down. The Heels took a six-point deficit into the half, 41 to 35. You and I was physical. They were scrappy. And they did a great job of making that game sloppy for the Heels. That's Ramesses. He's on the couch right now. They were 9 of 27 from the field. That's Carolina. And 3 of 13 from 3. And you still can't convince me that the rim on that side of the floor wasn't a double rim because UNC had a ton rim out. That stinking thing was like, if you didn't shoot it perfect... That thing was clanging out. And you kind of saw it happen on the flip side after the half when you and I, they had a couple of them rim out, rim out. So maybe it was that rim. Or maybe it's just that Carolina wasn't shooting worth crap in the first half. It was insane. Now I know that Coach Davis went in there and he lit into them because coming out of the break, there was an obvious emphasis on getting Mondo the ball down low. And he was able to go to work get to the free throw line a couple of times, and that set up the turning point of the game. Cormac stinking Ryan, who was absolutely abysmal from deep in the first half. My man got white hot from three, knocking down three of them. What He knocks down one, then Ingram follows up, knocks down one, and then Cormac on back-to-back -back possessions. Pull up, Bang, bang, baby, 4-3, which was stinking huge. It's huge for Cormac to see that ball go in. And then he knocks down the third one, forcing you and I to burn a timeout, and he lets the crowd know how he feels with the tongue out, baby. Great moment for the kid, and I hope it gives him some confidence moving forward. Carolina knocked down eight, eight of their first nine threes in the second half. They started the second half on a 19-2 run 
to take a 54 to 42 lead before another 8 0 run put the heels up 20. Another kudos goes out to the UNC defense. Yes. You and I shot 60% from the field in the first half. That is unacceptable. But they didn't make their first field goal until the 13:42 mark of the first or the second half, excuse me. And their second one came at the 8:44 mark. So the Heels really turned it up in the second half. Let's look at the box score real quick. Ingram led the team with 16 and 10, and he is by far my player of the game. Ingram had 16 points. 10 boards. He was really good on both ends of the floor. And then my game changer today is definitely Cormac Ryan. That 9-0, that nine point run that he had where he's just banging threes, that really changed the tide of the game. And I'm glad that Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan were up there sitting next to Hubert Davis in the press conference because they both deserve to be there. Baycott had 10 and 8. R.J. Davis heated up and had 13 points with four assists. And then, like I said, Cormac finished with 15 points and four boards. He didn't necessarily shoot well, but a lot of that is attributed to his woes in the first half. And how about the play of Jalen Withers? 21 minutes, he goes four for five from the field, one for two for three, and he added 11 points himself. And then my dude, Elliot Cadeau. Plays 23 minutes, goes five for nine from the field, one for three from three, and gives the Heels 15 points himself. He's begging for the keys. So give the kid the keys. I need to see my man EC getting more burn. You and I shot 45.3% from the field for the game compared to UNC shooting 42.6%. But the huge stat here is Carolina finishing 46.2% from three, knocking down 12 for the game. That's huge, guys. Absolutely huge. If we can be consistent from the outside, watch out. Hills were also terrific from the free throw line as well, shooting 27 for 31, 87.1%. So that was also big. And they were able to come back from an 18-12 rebound deficit at the half and out-rebound you and I 36 to 33 for the game. UNC also had nine blocks. So we really had a slow start, but you have to love the way that the kids finished the game. Now, moving past Northern Iowa, the competition only gets different from here as number 14 North Carolina will face the 4-1 and Villanova Wildcats in the winner's bracket who beat the Texas Tech Red Raiders in their opening round matchup, 85-69. to The Wildcats got 19 points from 6'8", 255-pound senior forward Eric Dixon, who asserted himself down low, but he also hit a couple of threes. So he's going to be an interesting matchup that the Heels have to look to. So let's look at Villanova's body of work thus far. They opened their season with a 90-63 victory over American and an 83-57 victory over LeMoyne before inexcusably losing at Penn as the number 21 team in the country, 76-72. They then followed that up with a 57-40 victory over Maryland and the aforementioned win against Texas Tech. Kyle Neptune is coaching in his second year as the head coach of Villanova. He's accumulated a 21-18 record, good for a 538 winning percentage as the Villanova head coach. The Wildcats leading score right now is 6'5", 210-pound senior guard Justin Moore, who is averaging 16.4 points per game, 3.8 boards, and 1.8 assists. He's currently shooting 44% from the field and 31% from three. The Wildcats lead a rebounder, a six foot seven, 215 pound senior forward Tyler Burton, who's averaging 8.3 rebounds to go along with his 11.8 points per game. He's also shooting 48.1% from the floor. And the Wildcats leading assist man right now is six foot two, 215 pound senior TJ Bamba who is averaging 2.3 assists per game, along with his 11.3 points per game and 4.3 boards. And he had an absolute monster jam against Texas Tech, man. That guy's got some stinking athleticism. And what you're noticing here is that Villanova's main guys, they're like 6'5", 6'7", you know, 6'6", 6'7". You know, 215 to 255. Some of these guys are stinking stout, man. They're athletes. And that's going to be something that... Carolina's going to have to look out for him, man.
But the guy that really impressed me as I watched that Texas Tech game, not going to lie, Eric Dixon. Number 43, bro. He He's kind of like a Harrison Ingram kind of player. That's kind of what he reminds me of. Um, you know, he's got a real good body, and he, he backs you down into the paint, man. And Villanova in and of itself, they don't drive to the basket and utilize like a whole bunch of quickness per se, but they are downhill, man. They are physical on their drives, and they play a very physical brand of basketball. So Carolina's going to have to stink and bring it, man. This is not going to be a featherweight fight. Villanova is going to bring the physical nature to this basketball game, and Carolina's going to have to be ready for that. Now, the North Carolina Tar Heels are led by Hubert Davis, who's heading into his third season as the UNC head coach. He boasts a 53-23 and 23 record as the head man for the Heels with a 697 winner percentage. And the North Carolina Tar Heels leading scorer and rebounder is Armando Baycott, who's averaging 19.5 points per game and 12 rebounds per game, respectively. And as far as I remember, I think Cormac Ryan is still the leading assist guy right now, technically speaking. So let's get into this game, man. I really think that this is going to be a close game. Um, I think that Carolina matches up a lot better uh, against Villanova. But Villanova is going to have some some uh, some things that they bring to the table that North Carolina is really going to have to look out for. And a lot of that has to do with they're going to be a lot more athletic than the teams that Carolina has played this year, man. A lot more athletic. And their starting guards, 6'4", 6'5". They're bigger guys. You know, RJ and Elliott, they're not necessarily big dudes. So on one end of the floor, they may very well be able to take advantage of maybe some quickness. But these guys are big, man. They're bigger guards, and they're physical. And I'm really interested to see how Carolina's guards handle that size differential. Justin Moore is six foot five himself, and he's he's uh, Villanova's leading scorer. So I really think that this second game is going to be two thirty ESPN or ESPN two. I have no idea which one they're going to go with right now because the other two games at the time of this video have not been played. But 2.30 on one of those networks, you're going to see number 14 North Carolina play Villanova. And don't let that pin game, you know, make you think any less of this Villanova team. This is a good basketball team. I just watched them compete against Texas Tech. And if they play like that against North Carolina, you can expect a closer game. Now, I do think that this is a game where... Carolina needs to put a huge emphasis on getting the ball down low to Armando Baycott. A huge emphasis, and we got to work inside out. I don't think you're going to see necessarily as many double teams from Villanova. I, I, may, be, I may be wrong there, but Villanova has uh, a couple of good athletes, and maybe they think they can match up you know, at least – okay down there on the block with Armando. They don't have a lot of size. They got a couple of guys that are listed at 6'9", so Armando should have the height advantage. Uh, Jalen Washington's at 6'10", so we'll see how that works out down low on the blocks. But, you know, Villanova, from what I observed watching them play Texas Tech, physical drives. They're not, they're not a team that necessarily has a lot of points off of assists. You know, they're taking it from the top, and they're going hard to the bucket. They're getting to the foul line. They shot a ton of free throws against Texas Tech themselves. And Carolina is going to have to match their athleticism. This is going to be the most athletic team that Carolina has played to date. Now, like I said, I think if they work inside out, they get Armando his touches, then Carolina will be fine. I think Carolina is fine, but I do think that this is a closer basketball game. I said 77 to 70. Northern Iowa. And at the beginning of that game, that's almost what it looked like it was going to be. Maybe one way or the other. We were actually just hoping for a stinking W, right? Well, I think that this game, some points are going to be scored. And it might even be in the 80s. So, I'm going to take the North Carolina Tar Heels, 84, Villanova, 80. In a really close basketball game. Another really good test. And this one is going to be very different from the game they just played against Northern Iowa. So like I said, 2.30 tip, 
ESPN or ESPN2. Unfortunately, we will not have the live stream because I will be at work. But as soon as the game over, gets over, guess what? That's when I get off of work. So I will immediately be able to start on the reaction video. And I'm going to try to catch it a little bit as I'm at the workplace. Shh. I promise you, I'm not stealing time off the clock. I will be working. But definitely going to be trying to catch some of that game against Villanova. Big basketball game. The most athletic team that we've played to date. So I'm looking forward to it. If you haven't already, Tar Heel Nation, like, share, subscribe to the content. Comment down in the comment section what you're looking from this team in this basketball game. Give me your score predictions, baby. And if you get a chance, look into becoming a member of the Huddle Hooligans, man. $4.99, you get a couple of extra perks. Some of the videos are released a little bit earlier to members only. And uh, we have a good time with it, man. It's just your way of helping support the channel and helping us grow this thing for Tar Hill Nation. So, like I said, 2.30 tip. Number 14, North Carolina, takes on the Villanova Wildcats tomorrow in the winner's bracket of the battle for Atlantis. Can't wait, baby. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one, Tar Hill Nation.